Here we're gonna do a nice find the area geometry problem. And we're gonna do this calculation two ways. The first way is with calculus and integration. And the second way is just with elementary geometry. So like I said, we're gonna find the area of this blue shaded region, but I wanna say a little bit about our figure. So this is gonna be a square with side length one, as I've denoted over here. And then inside of that square, we've got portions of two circles. So we've got C1 going from this vertex to this vertex with the center over here. So that means the radius of C1 is one. And like I said, the center is this bottom left vertex of the square. And then we've got C2. So that goes from this vertex up to this vertex and its center is over here. So that also has radius one. So like I said, the first way we're gonna do this is with calculus and integration. So what I wanna do is put this into a coordinate system. So let's say that we have the center of C1 is equal to the origin. And then we'll say that the center of C2 will be along the X axis. So that'll be the point one comma zero. Okay, great. And now we wanna figure out what this point right here is. So it's pretty clear that that point right there should have X coordinate one half, but let's go ahead and calculate it just for completeness. So from the center of C1 being the origin, and like we said, the radius of C1 is one, we know that the equation of C1 is X squared plus Y squared equals one squared. So the standard formula for the equation of a circle. Okay, and then we have a similar thing over here, except we have X minus one squared plus Y squared equals one, because we need to shift this to the right one unit. Okay, so now we wanna find the X and the Y values that satisfy these equations simultaneously. So maybe we'll do that by subtracting these two equations. Let's do this equation minus this equation. So notice the Y squareds are gonna cancel and the ones are gonna cancel and that's gonna leave us with X minus one squared minus X squared equals zero. But check it out, that's like a difference of squares formula. If we think about this as A and this as B, we have A squared minus B squared. So that's gonna be A minus B times A plus B. So here we have X minus one minus X times X minus one plus X equals zero. But notice this X minus one minus X, that's just negative one. And here we have two X minus one equals zero. But that very, very quickly tells us that X equals half. Okay. And then next we can see by throwing this value of X into our original equation, we'll see that one quarter plus Y squared equals one, which tells us that Y equals root three over two. So we get that from moving the quarter over, that gives us three quarters, then taking the square root, we get root three over two. So I've disregarded the negative solutions to these quadratic equations because we have put everything here up in the first quadrant, so we really don't need to worry about it in this case. All right, so let's go ahead and notice that this point right here, like I said, has coordinate one half comma root three over two, like we said before. Okay, so now let's maybe clean this up and then we can set up an integral for this blue shaded area. Okay, so we just found this coordinate and we also just talked about the equations of these two circles. And notice we've got some symmetry in this picture about this vertical line, x equals half. So that means all I really need to do is to find the area of this blue region that is to the left of this line and then double it. So here I can write that in the following way. So the area of my blue region will be equal to twice times the integral that gives us the area of this left hand bit. So let's see, what integral is gonna give us that left-hand bit? Well, we're gonna go from x equals zero to x equals one half. So again, from the origin, that's zero, zero, to over here, one half. 
and then we need to have the top curve, but notice the top curve is y equals one because we have a square of side length one minus the bottom curve, but the bottom curve is the circle C1. But if we solve that for one, we'll get the square root of one minus X squared. So in fact, we need to calculate this object right here. Okay, so let's see if we can do that. We'll notice that really quickly, that's gonna be equal to one minus two times the integral from zero to half of the square root of one minus X squared DX. So again, I can split that into two integrals. I've got the integral of one from zero to half, but that gives me a half multiplied by two, that gives me one. Okay, great. Now, maybe we'd like to do this with a trigonometric substitution. And I think that's a nice way to approach this problem. So we would probably let x equal sine theta, but that means that dx equals cosine theta. And also that means square root of one minus x squared is going to be the square root of one minus sine squared, which is also cosine theta. So that tells me that at the moment I have this is equal to one minus the integral of cosine squared theta, this is still multiplied by two d theta. I also need to figure out my bounds of integration. So let's see if we can do that. When x equals zero, that tells us that sine theta equals zero, but that tells us that theta equals zero. Obviously there are more zeros of the sine function, but that's generally the one that we take whenever we do one of these substitutions. So that means my lower theta bound is equal to zero like that. Okay, and then when x equals half, that means that sine theta equals a half. But now we wanna look when is sine equal to a half, and that's gonna occur at pi over six. So that means we can put a pi over six here for our upper bound. Okay, great. So now we're ready to talk about taking the integral of cosine squared. So how do we do that? Well, anytime you've got cosine squared, well, there's a couple of ways of doing it. You can either use the double angle formula or you can do integration by parts. Let's do it with integration by parts. And let's do that just because I've got this nice slick way of calculating this integral with integration by parts that I'd like to show everyone. So I'm gonna do the following. I'm gonna write this as one minus, and then we'll write this as the integral from zero to pi over six of cosine squared theta d theta plus the integral from zero to pi over six cosine squared theta d theta. So what did I do? I just took twice that integral and separated it out into the integral times itself. Now next, I'll think about this cosine squared as being cosine theta times cosine theta d theta. We'll let this cosine theta be u and then this cosine theta d theta be dv. So let's calculate the rest of our parts. That means du is minus sine theta d theta and that means that v is equal to sine theta. Then using the standard integration by parts formula, we know the integral of u dv is uv minus the integral of v du. Let's see what we get. So here we'll have one minus the quantity, the integral from zero to pi over six cos squared theta d theta. Now we can split this up into two parts. So it's gonna be u times v. So that'll be cos theta sine theta but we need to evaluate that from zero to pi over six, like this, and then it'll be minus v du, but let's see, minus v du, well the minus sign will cancel because of that and we'll get sine squared theta. But I'm gonna take that sine squared theta and write it as one minus cosine squared theta. So we'll have the integral from zero to pi over six of one minus cosine squared theta d theta. Okay, great. But here's where the trick happens. Notice that we've got a integral of zero to pi over six of cosine squared theta right there. And we have negative the same integral over here. So that means this is gonna cancel this term. Okay. And then we're essentially home free. We just need to do our evaluation. So we'll have one minus 
Now notice evaluating this at zero will give us zero because sine zero is zero. Cosine of pi over six is half. Sine of pi over six is root three over two. So that's gonna give us the square root of three over four. Again, that's plugging this pi over six into here. And then next we just have to integrate one from zero to pi over six. That just gives us pi over six. All of those are in parentheses. So notice in the end, we have one minus root three over four plus pi over six. And that's the final value for our area of this blue region. Okay, so let's maybe get rid of this integration type process for finding this integral and we'll do a simple geometric explanation. Okay, so we just did an integral in order to calculate this blue area. Now we're gonna use some elementary geometry. So I'll first start by taking this intersection point right here and dropping a perpendicular down to this baseline. And then via an argument like we did on the last one, so I don't think you probably have to find the equations of the circles, but you can do something equivalent. You can calculate that this length right here is one half, and then this length right here is the square root of three over two. Okay, good. And now for a second, we're gonna disregard that we have those circles there and instead we're gonna put a triangle or really triangles. So let's put a triangle like this and then another triangle like this. And I also wanna notice that the left-hand side of my picture is equivalent to the right-hand side of the picture. So we'll focus on what's happening over here and not worry about what's happening over there, just multiply by two. Okay, good. So let's see what we've got going on here. So the area of the blue can be written like this. So it's gonna be twice, again, because we're using symmetry. And then we'll have the area of one half of the square. So that's gonna be our starting point from which we'll subtract some stuff. So that'll be one half, that's half the area of the square. And then from that, we need to subtract two things. So we're going to first subtract the area of this sector of the circle. So let's say area sector, maybe let's give this a slight coloring. So let's say this is this dark green color. So I'll just put a dark green here to show that that's what we're doing there. And then we also need to subtract the area of this triangle. So maybe I'll put that in pink like this. So minus area. And then like I said, this triangle. So now we need to calculate both of those areas. Well, the area of the triangle is you know, pretty easy. So here we'll have one half and then root two. Well, let's see the area of this triangle. Well, that's gonna be one half times base times height. So we know the base and the height from our earlier discussion. So it'll be one half this times this. So that's gonna be root three over eight. So that's gonna be the area of this triangle. Now we need to talk about the area of the sector of the circle. This isn't quite as hard as it might seem because there's a formula for the area of a sector of a circle where the angle is theta. We just have to figure out the angle here. And we can do that by noticing that this triangle in pink is actually an equilateral triangle. And we know that because this side length down here is one because it's part of the square. And then, given that this goes from the center of the circle to the edge of the circle, and likewise here, both of those also have length one. So like I said, this is an equilateral triangle, making this angle length right here 60 degrees, or let's see, that's gonna be pi over three. But that means this angle right here is complementary to this angle right here, which is pi over three making it pi over six, good. And so this is an area of a sector of a circle where the angle measure is pi over six. 
So I'll let you guys recall what the exact formula is, but it's essentially r squared times the angle divided by two. So here we have radius squared is just one squared, and then the angle divided by two will be pi over 12. So we have something like that. Now next, we'll multiply that two through and we'll have one minus pi over six minus root three over four, which is exactly what we got in the other case. Okay, that's a good place to stop.